Confronted with the might of nature, the miners decide to leave the jeep and continue on foot. The villages in this region are havens of peace, soothed by the gurgling brooks of glacier runoff that flow into irrigation canals. Wheat and corn grow here in abundance, but this valley is best known for its succulent apricots, which form the basis of the Hunzikut people's diet. The fruit is dried in July and August to be eaten in the winter months. The Sumeya Valley, dominated by the 7,257-meter-high Mount Duran, becomes increasingly hostile and barren the higher you climb. That mountain is Chumarbaka. The mines are behind it. After the first day of climbing, the party sets up camp at the foot of the Silkian Glacier, 3,500 meters above sea level. It's the last place on the journey where bushes can be found to make a fire. The weather changes fast in the mountains. This is the major risk, and the miners know that. What do you think? Do we have to go back down? With this bad weather, we can go back down if you wish. We could sleep down there and come back up tomorrow morning. It's difficult to climb up there in this weather. <laughs> The atmosphere is tense. We have entered the spirit's kingdom, and everyone has lost a loved one on this mountain. The incantations of the shaman must have worked. Several hours later, the clouds clear from the horizon. But superstition persists. Two years ago, a group of men climbed up without the shaman's protection. It was obvious that the spirits did not approve of them looking for aquamarine and were disturbed by their pneumatic drills and dynamite. Incensed by these intruders, they killed them in an avalanche. The hike resumes, but every step becomes heavier and more painful. The further you climb, the less oxygen there is. The group finally arrives at the Shumar Bakar mine. At almost 5,000 meters above sea level, this makeshift village is made up of 70 small houses built of dry stone walls with canvas sheets for roofs. Murtazar picks up the pace because he can't wait to see the aquamarines found in his absence. Every hut houses around 10 men, who eat, sleep and live in cramped and difficult conditions. Murtazar's father is one of the elders who looks after the village when his son goes down into the valley for equipment or to sell stones. He is happy to see his son again because there were some impressive finds while he was away. No wash, huh? No wash. That's Mika. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's mica. Once it has been cleaned, the stone will be a very intense color. Following the orders of the shaman, each time Murtaza returns, the old man burns juniper branches to purify his house and chase away the evil spirits, which could divert the men from the richest seams of crystals. This time, the old man is harboring a special secret. 
While his son was away, he found an exceptional stone. No one else has seen it, and it must stay hidden until it is sold in the city. Showing it off could stir up envy among the other men. Aquamarine grows in perfectly hexagonal crystals, which in this mine are particularly large and well-formed. The irregular patches on each side of the crystal correspond to its natural growth. These are a guarantee of its quality and proof that it has not been cut, which would devalue the stone considerably in the eyes of collectors. The exceptional stone found by Murtaza's father remains out of sight. The breathtaking altitude of Shumabakar makes it one of the highest mines in the world. The miners tunnel into the enormous white seams that are clearly visible on the mountainsides. This is where the aquamarine is to be found. 65 million years ago, the Tethys Sea was where Pakistan now lies. Then a volcano thrust from the ocean, forming an island that would become Kohistan. The Indian tectonic plate moved gradually under the Asian plate, pushing back the sea. This mighty shift created the highest mountains in the world, the Himalayas and the Karakoram. As the mountains formed, they drew the aquamarine from the bowels of the earth and deposited it close to their summits. Aquamarine is still forming today at the Earth's core, but while the Karakoram continues to grow a few centimeters higher every year, the erosion of its summit due to atmospheric conditions means the aquamarine is moving closer and closer to the surface. This rock is extremely hard, so blasting with dynamite is the best way to clear away the rock and reach the seams lined with crystals. The men who work in these tunnels have no formal training in using dynamite, and these dangerous techniques result in frequent accidents. The miners drill holes in the rock. The drills don't function well in these conditions where the oxygen is so thin. Then sticks of dynamite are placed in the holes. Then they mark the fuse with a piece of paper so they can find it easily when it's time to light it. You have to be careful in the mine because of the dynamite. We've got to shift this stone. That's it, it's coming away now. And we'll blast away this block. Twenty or so fuses have to be lit, and they are short, so there's no time to lose. One, two, three, four. The miners count the explosions one by one, but this method is approximate, and one explosion can cover another. Let's get him out of there. Once again, the lack of organization and training of these shepherds turned miners has put their lives in danger. Two of the fuses were much slower than the others, and the explosions took place as the men entered the tunnel. One of the men is injured in this lost world without medicine or surgeons. There is just a male nurse to dispense first aid. He was inside the mine during the explosion, and a rock hit him on the head. I put two or three stitches in the wound. He's a little better now.
बोलते प्लास्टर लगाना Nothing is allowed to stop the search. The explosions have opened up a pocket of crystals, and for these miners, the aquamarines are more important than their own lives. With extreme care, as if they were handling a newborn child, the miners begin to extract the aquamarine from a fault covered in mica. The contrast between these rough-looking men and the delicate way they extract the fragile crystals is striking. The crystals are often covered in brown iron oxide. Each time a crystal is taken out, the miners say a prayer of thanks. Nature is a capricious beast. It can take months of work to open up a pocket of aquamarine like this. Some tunnels never produce anything. Either Gulmultaza or his father is present for every discovery because they have invested the most in this tunnel. At Chumarbakar, there are about 70 to 75 tents, and up to 500 people work there. What is the name of Chumarbakar? Chumarbakar means the earth, and Chumar is the iron. The ground here is hard like iron, so that's why we named it Chumarbakar. In the early days, there were fewer than 300 people here. And uh, they find easy the stone? At that time, it was easy to find the aquamarine. You didn't need dynamite. You could easily get it out of the ground with just a crowbar. Now we've formed crews of six or seven men. Each of them has one or several shares of the profits, depending on what he has contributed, whether it be explosives, machines, food, or sheer hard work. As night falls, the call to prayer. But some of the men continue their search deep in the tunnels. The snow melts in June, but there are heavy falls in November, so they have just four months to find their precious booty. For the rest of the time, Shumar Bakar is an inaccessible frozen wasteland. At night, the temperature can fall to minus 20 degrees centigrade. The huts have no heating, and when the men wake up, the insides of the roofs are covered with ice. There's no hot water for a morning wash. The village slowly comes to life, and the men have their tea. It's their only source of heat at this hostile altitude. Sleeping in the huts of Shumabakar is not easy. It's cold, but even worse, it's hard to breathe. The flames of the lamps consume a large part of the oxygen that is so scarce at this altitude. Add to that ten or so miners sleeping in these cramped little houses and the air becomes unbreathable. The men are close to suffocation and suffer terrible headaches. 
the men who continued on through the night have found something. They've dug out a beautiful cluster of aquamarines. But the substance surrounding the crystals, called gang, is too thick, making this stone too heavy. In this state, it'll be difficult to transport and to sell. One of the miners marks out the parts to be cut off. The gang will be cut away with a diamond edge saw. The job is carefully completed with a hammer and chisel so as not to spoil the appearance of the stone. these modifications is to make the crystals look as good as possible. The next stage is to remove the brown iron oxide, which obscures the deep blue color of the crystals. To do this, the aquamarine is dipped in a hot acid solution, which dissolves the iron oxide. After a thorough washing and then rinsing in water, the gem's true color appears. Several times a week, the men gather in the center of the village to sell their crystals according to an ancient tradition.